Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So uh, as you guys know, I went back to work a few weeks ago. I think this is either two weeks. I'm not really sure. I was trying to do two videos a week for a little bit, but I think what I've been liking doing just because my schedule has been absolutely crazy is it just film all week and just kind of upload once a week, a week in my life video. But I wanted to hop on here and film an intro because I actually completely forgot to the other day. So this video started on Father's Day and I kind of just hopped into it because I was a disaster and I'm just going to kind of insert that footage here and let this roll out so enjoy the video it's 9 35 we're gonna pretend i don't look like an absolute sweaty mess right now but i just wanted to show you guys what i'm up to so it's saturday right now june something i worked all day i was done i think around like six or seven my last night i had so much hair it came out so gorgeous but broke my back and then I had to run a couple errands. I had to go to Target. We need some cleaning supplies. We needed a new pot. We needed all that type of stuff and also stocked up at the liquor store. I'll show you guys. Cause I'm making a lot of different sangrias for tomorrow for Father's Day. We are hosting, but I think it looks so cute and nice and stocked. But we are hosting Father's Day tomorrow. I think there's just like six or seven of us and basically we are doing like really nice traditional Italian dinner, like homemade pasta sauce, homemade meatballs. I'm gonna make one of my charcuterie boards. All the works, so I want to bring you guys along as always. Today, the original plan was after my errands, I was going to have to come home and help Vinny deep clean the house. And he was so sweet enough to deep clean the whole entire house while I was at work. Everything is done. Anything that's left out, I just put there and I have to clean up. Like my notebook that I have for my checklist and my pot. But everything cleaned all the bathrooms, all the toilets, all the bathtubs, the back room is cleaned, windowsills, dining room, living room. Thankfully, everything is clean. I literally am a sweaty mess and wear my fuzzy flip flops around the house, but I really need a shower at some point. Now that most of the cleaning is done, I really just have to prep a few things and then we can go to bed. This is our third or fourth holiday that we've hosted, and I actually really love hosting. I wasn't sure if I was going to. I personally don't like being one of those people that's in the kitchen the whole entire day while everyone else is having fun. By the time everyone gets here, I want to be sitting down having fun. And even on Thanksgiving, I don't think I started cooking until like 12, and I was sitting by 5. So I don't know. I think I'm pretty good at like planning ahead and seeing what needs to be made first and all that stuff. So the way that I do that is I go through all of my recipes and basically I just kind of write down what can be made in advance, what has to be made right before everyone sits down, what we made the night before and that's a huge help. So for example, I'm not a huge dessert maker. If you guys watch my channel, you know that the chocolate covered strawberries fail, but I'm not too shabby at pies. So I'm going to be making a French silk pie from Joanna Gaines. So that actually said that it needs to be chilled eight hours before or at least, which is perfect. So I'm going to do that tonight. Also for the homemade meatballs, it said you could throw those in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. So I'll make that tonight. So I might make the bruschetta tonight, probably will end up just going to bed, but yeah, so I basically have written down for my game plan, pre-make the French silk pie, meatballs, and maybe the bruschetta. And then tomorrow morning, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-make all of the sangrias because they all need to be chilled in the refrigerator for at least four hours. I'm actually making all the ones I made for Thanksgiving. If you guys watched one of our very, very first vlogs together, it was hosting our first Thanksgiving, and I made an apple cider sangria, white sangria, red sangria, and they were all delicious. So I'm making all of them. So I'm going to make that first thing. Then I'm going to start with the pasta sauce because we're doing nice homemade pasta sauce because it needs to simmer for the longest time. I've never tried to make homemade meatballs before and I've never tried to cook them by dropping them raw into the pasta sauce and letting them cook and simmer. So I'm super excited to do that. So then I'm going to drop the meatballs in. Then I'll make the fettuccine carbonara. Then I will make, is it carbonara or carbonara? Carbonara. Carbonara. I should be able to start by 1040 and I think I will be done around three, which is what everyone's getting here. And the garlic bread you want to be the last because it literally goes in the oven for two minutes and once it's done, it needs to be served hot. So I think I have a pretty good game plan. It is a little before 10 p.m. right now. I'm hoping I can make the pie and the meatballs before 12, if not 11.30. I did get some more plates at Target. I also got like a big pot and like a cool big pot slash saucepan slash skillet type thing. So I'm going to show you guys that. 
for tomorrow. We needed a lot more silverware, so I got this from Target. I still have to wash it, which is why I don't care if it's on the floor. We also only have one big pot for pasta. We're making two pasta dishes, but I got this massive stainless steel stock pot. And also, I thought this was really cute. It's a Cravings by Chrissy Teigen, and I don't know if it's big enough for pasta because it doesn't look like it's big enough for boiling water, but it's like a big dish. So I don't think I'm going to pre-make the bruschetta because I looked at the recipe and I think it might get a little too oily overnight, so I'm just going to do the French silk pie and the meatballs. This is what I'm making. It says it should actually only make take like 20 minutes to prep and then 10 minutes to cook. It looks pretty easy. The only thing is I don't have an electric mixer, so I know that stirring is going to take me a lot longer. This is the pie crust that I'm using. It's from Trader Joe's. You thought it just has to take it out and let it sit for 30 minutes until it's pliable. I think this is a flat pie crust, so I have to like curve the edges myself, which is fine. This always happens, at least once when I host something, one thing comes out like really weird. So I'm making the pie and already the pie is not going too good because all of the steps require an electric mixer and we don't have one because I refuse to buy anything for the kitchen until we redo it. So I'm, hi honey. You wanna go up? Come on. She is my shadow. She loves mom. Like this chair is so small and she must sit on it with me. Aww. Little doggy so This is how she's sitting so she could be near me. Anyway, you need an electric mixer for all the steps. We don't have an electric mixer. So I'm like, we can whisk it. So everything's like requiring you to beat it on high heat for five minutes and we're like trying to hand whisk it. So already it's not getting as light and fluffy as we need. But I'm like, screw it, I don't care. I'm like, okay, so I'm just gonna pour it in the pie crust and let it like sit in the fridge overnight. And then I realized that I need to bake the pie crust. Like I just wasn't thinking. So now I'm like, okay, I just had a big pie crust. So I take out the pie crust and it's like flat. So then I like fold it over my cute little pie dish that I love. And I'm like, now what? So now I realize that I can't just, I was just gonna throw it in the oven for 15 minutes. I don't know. Now I realize that there's something called blind baking a pie crust. If you guys are bakers, you probably know what this means. I've never heard of this before in my life. Basically, it wants you to like line it with parchment foil like the pie crust, put pie weights on it, like people actually own pie weights, and then put it in the oven for 20 minutes, take it out, take off the pie weights, poke holes in the bottom, 20 minutes. Like, holy crap, I really thought that this was gonna be like, for an hour altogether, wait for it to cool, then put it in. So my quick little thing's not doing too good. So I put it back in the freezer because it had to be really cold. And then I took it out and then I lined it with foil. And then someone said that they actually poured granulated sugar on it as the weight. And it's at 350 degrees for an hour. So at the end of the hour, I take it out and then I'm going to throw out the foil and I might keep the baked sugar for another recipe and wait for that to cool for another half hour and then pour the mixture in and then be done. Like insanity. So it's 10.53 right now. That basically means I'm definitely not going up until 12.30. While we're waiting for that, we might as well make the meatballs. The meatballs should be super simple. I just have to mix a bunch of ingredients together in a large bowl and then just shape them into little meatballs. Put it on a sheet cover with pasta wrap and refrigerate. Let me just write down the ingredients. One and a half pounds ground beef, one large egg, half cup grated Parmesan cheese, third cup breadcrumbs, one to two tablespoons minced garlic, salt, pepper, third cup milk, up to half a cup, quarter cup chopped parsley, and that's it. So that should be easy enough. So I'm gonna go mix that up. Good morning guys, sorry it's gonna be a little loud because we have the tornado, but we are starting with the sangria. So this is going to be a white sangria. These are all Christmas recipes because I don't think they taste Christmassy and they are just delicious. So this is a white Christmas sangria. Right now I have chopped red apples, black cherries instead of cranberries, and rosemary sprigs. 
And in this one, there's gonna be two bottles of Chardonnay and a little bit of sparkling cider. Next is red sangria. So we have oranges and pears in here. And in there, we're actually gonna throw in some Grand Marnier, a bottle of Cab Sav, and actually a little bit of ginger ale. I got this from Trader Joe's, never tried it. And last but not least, we're going to do a fireball. It's like a cinnamony type of apple cider. So basically in here, we just have a lot of apples. There's gonna be the rest of the bottle of sparkling cider along with some fireball and white wine. So starting with the red, we're gonna do a bottle of the Cab Sav. A quarter cup of Grand Monnier. Along with three quarters of a cup of ginger ale. Stir this up. So I'm going to do almost the whole bottle of sparkling cider because I have to leave a little bit for the oh, other okay. one. Good. A couple quarter cups of Fireball. And then a bottle of Chardonnay. Christmas in June. We're gonna do two bottles of Chardonnay. The rest of the sparkling cider. All right, and they just have to chill until it's time to drink them. So here's our new massive big pot that I'm gonna use to make the sauce. Olive oil has been heating up, so I'm going to start with doing a bunch of diced white onion and also I think it's like six or seven garlic cloves. And everything I do for this, I want to be on like medium heat. So while that cooks, I'm going to chop up some sausage. I've been stirring it on low medium heat. Now that it's sauteed and fragrant, I'm going to dump in the sliced Italian sausage along with three quarters of a pound of bamboo. It is browned and I just drained the fat. So I'm gonna put it back on the low heat side. I'm going to dump in a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And it says only a 12 ounce can of tomato sauce, but we have a decent amount of people eating. So I'm going to do a full 28 ounce can of tomato sauce. And I might be adding more crushed in soon too. Then I'm going to do two little cans of tomato paste. Do you think I should add in another big can of crushed tomatoes? I think there's a lot can't of hurt. Right, there's a lot of people eating it. Also, I am drop. There's two different kinds of meat in there, and I'm gonna be dropping in the meatball, so I don't want to yeah. touch too much meat. And I got you three big cans. No, I know. I don't. I already put it. So it originally wanted 12 ounces of tomato sauce, so I put in 28. So I think that's good. Yeah, because those are uh, like 12 and a half or whatever it is. Yeah, look at that. I want to stir. Oh, you stir, honey. Basil. Two tablespoons of white sugar. Where is this? Italian seasoning. Here's how it's looking. I'm gonna wait for it to get hot and then I'm going to reduce the heat to low and let it sit for an hour. the pasta sauce is simmering and now I'm making the bruschetta you guys have seen me make this a million times it's Joanna Gaines recipe but basically it's just a bunch of colorful tomatoes with four cloves of garlic and now I'm just going to throw in a cup of white balsamic vinegar and a quarter cup of olive oil so I'm just gonna mix this up so here it is I'm going to cover it and put it in the fridge until we're ready to use it so I just pulled this out of its packaging. When we went to Sorrento, I'm so not a souvenirs person, but when we went to Italy, everything had so many cute little lemons on it. So this is my favorite thing ever, and I wanted to save it for a special occasion, and this is it. So I'm going to take this gross towel, and I'm going to put this right there. A little taste test. Oh my God. Dude, it's so good. Sauce? Yeah. Okay, so now we 
they're making fettuccine carbonara, carbonara, however you want to say it. Just in case someone likes more of a white sauce, we have the fettuccine almost done. And then over here we have sliced onion, garlic, shallots. I have bacon over here. I thought this was enough. According to the recipe, I'm actually like 50% short, but I think that's fine. And now I'm gonna make the cream. So I have three yolks in here. Now we are gonna do half a cup of heavy cream, which is exactly the amount that we have left. So that's perfect. Three quarters of a cup of Parmesan. Look how beautiful the Chrissy Teigen pot is. I'm obsessed with the color, I'm obsessed with the pots. We're gonna use this. Gonna saute the shallots first. Next, I'm going to do the slices of onions. And now a clove of garlic. Let's unfold this in where hopefully it's not going to get too hot. So now that the sauce has been simmering for like an hour, now we're gonna do the meatballs. So you're making the meatballs. So I have to delicately put them in and not stir for 20 minutes so that way they don't fall apart. I'm hoping that they're good. And once the meatballs have been in for 20 minutes, you can give it a gentle stir. So now I'm just gonna leave that guy sitting until everyone gets here and the pasta's done. The bruschetta is ready to be topped. We are on a roll. It is one o'clock right now. So not everyone's getting in here until three, but I think Vinny's brother's gonna come a little bit early in like a half hour. So the last thing I need to get done before he gets here is the charcuterie board because I think I need to set up camp at the table because I need to make a absolutely massive one. What's up guys? It is Monday right now. I just got home from work. I have a massive bowl of leftovers right here, so I'm a little hungover. I didn't eat a lot today, so I have a huge bowl of the leftover spaghetti with sauce and meatballs and some garlic bread. I am officially the worst holiday vlogger ever. I don't know what happens. I'm like so on top of it. And then as soon as people start to come around the time everything needs to start getting plated, I just get so overwhelmed and I literally forget. I don't even forget to film. I just like, I can't even think about it right now. And I just turn into a mess. I don't even know why. I just can't do it. So I never even end up changing. I end up like wearing whatever I was wearing while I was cooking. But I was really annoyed because everything came out so freaking good. Except this one started to go downhill. So around an hour before everyone was supposed to come, his brother came and I was making a charcuterie board and we don't have AC yet. And it's not usually too bad, but of course on Father's Day, it was so freaking hot that like the charcuterie board was like, melting and it was like liquefying and honestly it was just kind of gross and that's when I just started to get like really overwhelmed and I was like screw it. It did come out really cute. We had a cute little sangria station and that came out really cute so I'm a little bit bummed that I forgot to film it but I would just let you know how everything is. The sauce, like spaghetti meatball sauce, absolutely insane. I personally think probably one of my top three to five things I've ever made. I've been telling Vinny this for a while but I always say when we eventually do have kids in a couple of years, once I get pregnant, I want to do like weekly Sunday dinners and kind of have one of those things where like whoever wants to show up kind of just shows up. Like it's a, it's a fun thing and I want to make this sauce every single time. So that was so good. Pasta carbonara was all right. I just think that's something that you're supposed to like mix the sauce and the pasta and then serve immediately. And instead I had it simmering for a while to keep warm. So it was good, but this was obviously took the cake and then the brownie pie was honestly delicious it was sweet but it was really really good so everything came out absolutely awesome it was so much fun we drank we hung out we went outside after a while i wish it wasn't so damn hot but thankfully the next holidays that we host will be in the winter so it'll be cooler and then hopefully by next summer we have eight seats so definitely try out the sauce it is so freaking good and now I'm just gonna devour this. Sorry for being the worst holiday vlogger ever. What's up guys, it is 6 or 7 p.m. My phone is somewhere, 6 or 7 p.m. on Tuesday. I worked today all day, but I got home around six, which isn't that bad. I've been getting home around seven usually, so that was pretty nice. And now I'm gonna finally start getting everything organized down here. 
So I officially just put away all of my sweat sets. You guys know in the fall and winter, I love like my cropped long sleeve sweatshirt type things and sweatpants and it is way too hot for that now. So now I've been living in these types of things which are also really cute. But I wanted to set something up down here. One, because I don't really have a lot of room upstairs and also two, I actually just wanna organize everything tie-dye tonight because I'm also going to organize everything to start selling it. This is the clothing rack that was already upstairs that I've been using that I cleared off. And this is a new one. I didn't realize it was shorter, but still cute. This one was from Amazon. Then you just put it together for me today. And I'm going to do one of all my white clothes and one of all ready of my tie-dye clothes. Here's all my white clothes. There's a tie-dye outfit. There's a big mess over there. And then here is all my tie-dye clothes from upstairs because it's a big bag and I didn't want to take a million trips. I just swept down here so I don't have to feel bad when I'm dumping things on the floor that it's clean. I'm gonna set up my laptop so I can watch some YouTube while doing this. Guys, look at my nails. I did a blue today and it is horrific. And I did wear gloves, but when you're blow drying, it just gets on it. Tomorrow is finally phase three in New York on Long Island, so nail salons open tomorrow, but I don't have an appointment made. I'm sure they're gonna be so booked and I also don't have time to go, so I need to figure my life out. I don't think about you Perhaps my wedding built me I don't think about you anymore Except when I hear songs that you sing I don't remember how you used to play With your hair to make my soul burn When you didn't know what Everything's a little wrinkled, but that's okay. Look how cute it looks. I love the cloudy colors. I get along without you well. So if you guys remember my first tie-dye video, I got these joggers from Pretty Little Thing, and I was not happy with the quality. They're very, they're polyester, which I didn't know, and they feel like gym shorts. So I tried a tie-dye pair, and they didn't come out horrible, but they're definitely not anything that'd be matching. Like, yeah, you can't even tell. Like, they just look like they all washed nude, which is cute, but not what I'm looking for. And so I was a little disappointed because Misguided, as you guys know, is my favorite, favorite store. I have these sweatpants that I raved about to you guys, the petite, white, oversized 90s joggers. Had a white pair of them that I tied in my last video. Absolutely love them, so cute. So I ordered like 10 pairs recently, and they are not the same pair that I had last fall. They're definitely not as polyester as Pretty Little Thing, but they're way, like you can see, it's like slinky material. And the drawstring, it doesn't even like tighten. So same thing, I tried to tie dye a pair, like that pink color, like that oversized crew neck I have, and came out pretty, but super, super like washed, and like the tie dye doesn't show up. I was gonna return them just because not what I wanted, and then I remembered that Rit actually has a dye more line, so it's purposely meant for polyester, nylon, just things that are a little bit harder to tie dye. So here's my little collection. The bathroom is still looking pretty great from when Vinny cleaned it, but here's all my regular Rit collection. These you could really just only use on cotton for the most part. And I just got these colors for the polyester. So this one's sandstone, and I'm hoping that I can make one look kind of like taupey. So I definitely could make a blush pink, a really light sky blue, and like a tan color all with those and I also did want to try some yellow and orange. I thought that was really cute. So I haven't tried it yet but I'm hoping that with those I'll be able to tie dye all the freaking pretty little thing and misguided joggers I have that are now polyester because that was really annoying. I'll let you guys know how that turns out. and all of my white stuff is 
hung up. I'm so excited. I feel like there's so many cute pieces, like a lot of zip ups like this and cycling shorts and big gildan crew necks which are amazing i know it's hot for them now but it won't be but before i go up i want to cut some more sweatshorts because i have been living in them for work i feel like with hair it's one or the other either you are the type to dress so cute and wear like jeff campbellitas every day you know like the hairdresser has like the long beach waves and like the hat i love that or you're like me and you just wear French braids and gym clothes every day. Cause I just get, I don't know how people do it. Like I just get so hot and like I get stuff all over myself. And I don't know, but I do want to try harder. And oh, it's only Tuesday and my voice already sounds like this. It is going to be a long week. But one of my salon sweet neighbors, she was wearing this freaking cute. And she's just cute. So I don't know if that just looked good on her, but I don't want it anyway. So we'll see. But it was like a clear aprons so you could like sanitize between clients with these like chunky gold straps oh my god it was so cute it's coming in soon but i loved it because you could see your cute little outfit underneath it and i was like i love that because i also have a white dress cute i'm gonna have an apron so i think that might inspire me so one of my favorite pairs of sweatshorts i cut from a boo sweatpants and that's what i'm gonna do again today and i also have this pink pair and I feel like long, they're a little too bubblegummy for me, but I feel like as sweatshorts, they'll be really cute. And also for the two sweatpants that didn't come out the best that are tie-dye, so I'm just gonna cut these quick. What I need now is I need more like basic flattering tank tops to wear with these guys. And I was gonna make this whole video just for Father's Day, just like a nice Father's Day vlog, but I am pretty horrible at remembering to finish the vlog once everyone gets here. I think I just get, pretty overwhelmed like whenever i was to holiday i'm always so calm and like so at the head of the game and then the second somebody comes in i'm like it's so hard because i do feel like most of the youtubers that i watch are full-time youtubers so they can just film so much in a day and i still full-time hairdresser work is going so good i'm a lot less tired when i get home than i thought i definitely think only taking three full colors a day was the right move especially because everyone's hair is so outgrown from not getting their hair done for so long that they're taking me longer than usual so if i also had more people i'd lose it but i did stop taking new clients I would say for now, but I don't actually know if I'm going to... I don't want to say ever take them again because I do feel like that's dramatic, but like it kind of is a possibility. Before the pandemic, I was already planning on probably stopping taking new clients by January 2021, which is like crazy to say. I'm a very blessed that I have a clientele that would make it so I didn't need to take any more new clients at that point four years old but i just my next available appointment for anyone like weekdays otherwise is september but my issue is that a lot of my clients do come every three months so the ones that are coming right now they're due again in september so i think i might have everyone on a pretty decent schedule throw these on all my shorts I feel like I kind of dig it, but I also think they need to be shorter. I'm also wearing shorts underneath this and a big t-shirt, so this is not the vibe right now. I kind of like them. It's hard because especially with things that are like a color correction or... I don't want to say needs a lot of attention because obviously everyone's here needs a lot of attention. It's just almost one of those things where it's like... I always say I'm like having a new client is almost like going on a first date. Right now, if one of my existing clients is a couple minutes behind or something like that, it's not a big deal because I know her. I know what her hair looks like. I know what she likes i know what she thinks is warm versus what she thinks is an inch if that makes sense so because of that it's tough because for the new client i almost just don't feel like i have that extra time okay for example if you were going on a dinner date with a friend you would only allot yourself a certain amount of time and know that'd be fine because you'd be okay versus uh if you were going on a dinner date with a new date you would book more time because you don't know what to expect i almost feel like that's the perfect analogy for taking new clients i just don't have the time right now to be like booking off extra hours to get to know someone's hair i think that's actually a very good analogy it's obviously something that is exciting it's obviously something that could change but as of right now i just don't know when i would have the time to do that and i'm only planning on doing more with youtube and doing more things on the side like before the pandemic i was only working like four days a week maybe five and right now i'm doing six and i want to eventually be able to cut 
back a little bit. So let's see how many clients I pre booked so far. Oh my god, it's so crazy. Tomorrow's two weeks since I've been back. It feels like it's been eight years. In a good way though. I've been feeling good. I'm not sick of it yet. So I currently have 184 full colors booked from now until like beginning of September. But that's mainly actually just between like June, July, August. That's where I'm at. It's so sad too because I feel like I had such a good tan going on. Like everyone's like, oh, I look like a bum all quarantine. I'm like, I looked great all quarantine because I was doing my lash extensions. I was so bored. I was doing my hair. I was getting a tan. I was just feeling good. And now I literally look like this every day. My mask, all I can see are my under eye bags. And I'm like, but I am getting my Botox again two weeks from tomorrow. And I am so excited. So I love my Botox. I don't think I'll be getting my lips again. It's not that I didn't like them. It's like I couldn't really tell the difference. And in a good way. I don't think I really want them bigger than they are now. Like I'm kind of, I'm comfortable with them. Like this is good. This on the other hand is, I just like it better with Botox in it. I don't like touching anything else. I don't like touching my lap lines or in here or anything. I just like my forehead. As long as it looks natural, like I don't want someone to be like, ooh, you got Botox. I feel like then your Botox probably isn't good. Anything that if somebody says, your Botox looks good, your boob job looks good, your extensions look good, if they can tell, then it doesn't look that good. You want them to be like, oh my God, hair looks great. I'm going on a tangent. I'm very tired. It's only 10 o'clock, but I'm just exhausted. But I think I'm really killing it with the analogies tonight. I think I'm going to input some clients and maybe do some budgeting so i'm going to see you guys tomorrow so it is wednesday night right now and since our father's day charcuterie board was quite a fail i want to make a little mini one for me and Vinny to eat in bed it is cooler out today but it is still pretty hot in here so i want to do one thing at a time just so nothing gets all gross like it did on father's day i want to do some manchego cheese beasley is playing with her toy right behind me if any of you have dogs, I'm so sorry because I know how it goes when they hear another dog. So let's just do, it's just us two. Okay, we get it. So we didn't live in this house all last summer. We closed a year ago this month, which is crazy. I can't tell if it feels longer or shorter, but we closed a year ago. So that means we moved in last August. So it was still really hot the first month or two we were here. So we knew it gets really hot in here, but thankfully we do have an AC in the upstairs bedroom and then also in the back room. So like I can edit back there in the AC, but as far as like hanging out watching TV, we really just stay upstairs. We're used to having the whole living room, but now it's actually been kind of nice just hanging out and eating bed. So I thought a little cheese board in bed sounded really nice. So a little cheese board 101 to make them like cute and stand up-ish like this. I just alternate the sides so then i have some little slices of mozzarella See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. got some manchego cheese Whoa. got some mozzarella i have some yummy blueberry goat cheese mm -hmm. i feel so bad that's the nice expensive like dry salami i had that i started cutting and it got too gross i had to throw out i was a little busy no, i get it i'm just saying no i know <laughs> um red probably sounds nice with actually no what's so good Cheese board thing is it supposed to be? What about the Malbec? Me. Really? Yeah, because I know you like Malbec. Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall. So why didn't you, why didn't you call? So Cannot wait to have Central AC. Okay, these are amazing. They're sesame. Honey almonds from Trader Joe's and everyone was obsessed. Let's sprinkle a bunch of these. Some dried pitted cherries. Some pita bite crackers. That was supposed to be small. <laughs> we are going to sit, watch Love Island, enjoy the AC. Good morning guys and happy Thursday. It is around 9 a.m. right now. I just got ready and made my coffee. So I am super excited right now because I have been looking to get a new work bag for a couple months now, if not maybe a little longer. 
this right here has been my current bag since my 21st birthday and I'll be turning 25 in September. So it is the Givenchy Mini Antigona and this was my first ever like designer bag. I bought it for myself for my 21st birthday. It was like my gift to myself. It held up pretty well. I take this thing everywhere. I remember when I first got it, I wouldn't bring it anywhere because I was so nervous to like ruin it. And then after a couple months, I was like, well, what's even the point of having it if I'm never gonna use it? So then I brought it everywhere, like the gym, like wherever. So I love it, but I've been looking for a new one. Just something maybe a little bit bigger to bring to work, just so that way I could throw it on like my camera more easy. And I was just looking for kind of something to switch up a little bit. So I wanted something just different a little bit. So I was super excited when Teddy Blake reached out to me and they were curious if I wanted to try one of their bags. And as soon as I looked at the website, I was obsessed because I loved the vibe. With bags, I do like them to be a little bit more structured. Back in the day, I was so obsessed with crossbody bags. But ever since Benji Vanshi, I've been very into more just like the kind of structured looking bags. So... The whole point is just the fact that they're like designer handbags but for a lesser cost. So they're made in Italy, they're made from really nice material, and the packaging is gorgeous. I love how it like folds out like this. Oh, and here it is. I'm so excited. So here's the packaging. So I don't think it's gonna be way bigger than the Givenchy, but that's why I just want something with a little bit of a bigger opening, if that makes sense. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I'm obsessed with this. First of all, the color is so cute because you guys know I love my like super, super light muted tones. So this is a really pretty, just like light blue. But when it's open, it has a little strap or you can just hold it like this. I think it depends where I'm going. So here is the back up close. This is the Ava 11 inch light blue with the gold. You guys know I love my gold accents. And when you open it, it's just nice and deep and very compact and structured, which I love. So I'm going to transfer everything from my bag to this now. So you can see it's just that little bit bigger that I was looking for. Are you kidding? I obviously just have a color scheme. And I'm on my phone like right now really quickly because I wanted to see if the camera would fit and I think it will. Yep, it fits perfectly right in there so I don't have to have it sticking out of my bag like I always do because that is my biggest pet peeve. And this is how it looks on. Or you can just kind of hold it like this which is usually how I hold my other one. And I'm going to be linking the collection down below in case anyone wanted to use my link to get yourself a brand new bag. And it was so hard to pick a bag too because they have like cute like little backpack type looking bags and also like tote bags. This was really hard to pick one and there's so many cute colors like they also have the blush pink. I was so close to getting but I'm like yeah my last bag was light pink maybe I should switch it up but I definitely am going to be buying more from them in the future. If you guys did want to buy from them, I do have a discount code for you guys. My discount code is TBABBY20 for $20 off of your purchase. So freaking cute and I feel like it's the perfect like spring and summer color. I just love myself like a really light muted blue. And on that note, now that this is transferred over, I'm going to get ready to head to work. Looks like you're changing and all. Well, why didn't you, why didn't you call?
work for the day. I only filmed my first client, I think, but it was a good day. I'm tired like always, but so cute, my client got me cookies and said welcome back. Her and her mom have a little baking company and they're so good. I literally devoured most of them as soon as she gave them to me because I'm so hungry. And that's all that's left. I'm sure you guys are like, girl, I thought you were eating healthy. What happened? She literally gave them to me at the perfect time because we had so many delicious leftovers from Father's Day that I told Vinny, I'm like, this whole week, I'm kind of just eating whatever I want. And then I'll start fresh on Monday because I'm the type that if I'm trying to be healthy while there's yummy food in the fridge, I just can't do it. Put my phone in my bag. Always just have a million things. So I just got home from work. We're gonna go on a little cocktail hour walk with Beasley. And um, back where I started, but I'm gonna make for our little happy hour drink is whatever I have left from sangria from holidays, I put in these little mason jars with all the fruits so that way they could kind of like ferment. And I have this guy too. I think this is the apple cider one, I like this. I'm almost wondering if I put white wine over the rest of the apples. Is that a good idea? I think that is what I'm gonna do. It's a little bit fireball-y, so I want to. Fill up with some white wine. This is the way you do it, you keep it going. And then I'm gonna give Vinny the red because that's his fave. And I'll top his off with the red. All right, we're gonna take Beasley on a walk. We have the little home creature. We have our, we both have our sangrias. I wanna be a home creature. I get it. <laughs> We just got back from our walk, but I want to show you guys what I got. I think I know what this is. Yes, okay. I don't know if I mentioned this yet in this video, but one of my studio neighbors was wearing the cutest like apron thing. And she also dresses really cute. I think I did mention this, but I don't dress cute at work because I'm also like, I have an apron that's gonna be covering it anyway. So I saw her wearing this and I thought it was really cool. How do you not think it's cute? It's so cute. <laughs> No, it's cool, Vinny. It has cool, like, black straps with the gold. It has a cute little zipper. Vinny, it's cool. You don't know fashion. It has cool little, like, things in the back. I like it. I think it's really cool, and I could disinfect it easily between clients. All right, guys. I think that basically does it for today's video. We are going to go up in the AC. Relax. I'm going to edit this video. Even though it is Thursday, I don't think I'm going to put this video up until Monday because I want to be able to do like one video a week. So I will see you guys on Monday. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, guys. Abby from the future really quickly. I am here in my setup. I have my laptop to edit, my hair phone. I saw some people asking why I have two phones. I have a hair phone to book all my appointments, my coffee, even though it's 8 o'clock at night, my water. I'm pointing at different things iPad and my scheduling notebook. So I realized before I post this, you guys know I have been doing a lot of tie dye. I'm gonna be doing a lot more, but I realized that by the time that you guys see this, I'm going to be selling everything. I didn't want you guys to miss it. I'm gonna be selling everything over on my Instagram at Abby Palmieri. So this should be up on Monday. And on Monday, I'm actually just giving away a cute little tie dye set just because I'm going to start selling everything on Wednesday. And I just thought it'd be really cute. Give away a set in forehand. I think I'm gonna do a crew neck cycling shorts you could check my instagram for details because it'll be up by the time that this goes live but basically i'm going to post a picture you just have to be following me on my instagram and share the post to your story and then on wednesday at 8 a.m i'm going to pick a winner and then wednesday at 6 p.m i'm going to just sell everything that i have go over my instagram for some details if you either want to win a tie-dye set or buy one i just thought it'd be really fun ending the video now just didn't want to forget Break it down. I so windy, sing a town. Don't forget the dollar sign. How to sound? Yeah, that sound good. Tell them.